Former editor of the Washington Post and one of the most celebrated journalists of his generation, Ben Bradley, has died aged 93. Bradley was editor of the Post for 26 years and presided over some of its most revered reporting, including its coverage of the Watergate scandal, an investigation that ultimately led to the resignation of the then US President Richard Nixon. I'm joined now by Lionel Barber, editor of the Financial Times, who also worked with Ben Bradley at the Washington Post in the 1980s. Lionel, what made him special? He had an outsized personality. He had a swagger, a confidence. He was an inspirational figure. And people would literally walk through a hail of fire, hail of bullets for him. He was loved from top to bottom. But he was also a great journalist with an instinct for what would make a big story. And as you said, the two big stories of his time were the investigation of Watergate, which led to the resignation of Richard Nixon, and the publication of the Pentagon Papers, the secret history of the war, which challenged the official version of, what, of how successful that war had been fought. And these were both devastating blows to the American establishment and changed the political landscape. And working with him, how did that influence your development as a journalist? Well, I, I can't do the crackling voice uh, much as I'd love to. Generation of Washington Post journalists, by the way, all have accents uncannily like Ben Bradley's. Go on, try. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, Fred. Uh, <laughs> But no, he, he was, I think I used to go, uh, as when I could, when I was not writing stories, I'd go to the evening conference to watch him in action and how he would tease out what the story was. He was an impact man. He, he was a newsman above all. He wanted to know what was going to go on the front page, what would, what would, what would get people uh, talking uh, the next morning when they got the Washington Post, which of course in those days was a tremendously uh, influential paper. And if he didn't like a story, he didn't snooze, he just go, uh, me go, my eyes glaze over. Right. But there were also some, I mean, not, I mean you've mentioned and referenced some of the great uh, post stories and, and coups. But there were one or two that uh, fell short, particularly, I mean, there was a moment in the early 80s where they won a Pulitzer for something that turned out to be wrong. I mean, how, how do you think that would have... Well, that was a devastating blow, the Janet Cook uh, uh, scandal. Uh, the... Uh, this concerned a, a reporter, an African-American reporter, who wrote a story made up about a whole series of articles, by the way, not just one, about a so-called 80-year-old uh, crack addict, drug addict, uh, harrowing story, but it was completely made up. And none of the internal processes at the Post spotted it. And any other editor probably would have forfeited his job. Uh, in fact, Ben... Uh, asked for a full investigation, which went on to full days. It was published over several days, pages of ruthless self-examination. And they handed the prize back as well. And they had to hand the prize back. Um, right. What do you think the legacy will be of Ben Bra Bradley at a time when this business is going through fundamental change? I mean, like nothing you've seen before. And, I mean, he is of a particular era. He defined a particular era, but we're now in a slightly different era. Will... Are there lessons? Well, in the golden age of Ben Bradley, and when I was there in 85 for four, nearly four unforgettable months, I mean, this was the heyday. You could actually hire plenty of people. There was money to spend. I was sitting in a room full of Pulitzer Prize winners, and, and it, you know, print was advertising, uh, was roaring along. Uh, the Post was the dominant paper in, that, in, that, uh, in the city. And you, know, you were looking at returns of 20% margin, profit margins, uh, Post obviously had uh, cable TV as well. Uh, this has completely changed because of the internet, and we don't have as much money, and the glory days are somewhat uh, have somewhat faded. There's new kinds of journalism, lots of opportunity, but Ben Ben Bradley will be remembered as a for a particular age, late 60s through to the mid 80s, late 80s. But is there something? of what he brought to journalism, which you described earlier, that you think I, I will carry on in the digital, regardless well, of what channel? Again, we're not seeing the end of journalism. We're not seeing, by the way, the end of newspapers. They still have a role, and I, I believe they will have a role to play. But what Ben uh, rem rem will remind us, and what I see still as a guiding light, is an infectious enthusiasm, a moral and f physical courage, uh, a determination to get the story, to investigate in in the public interest and holding power to account and speaking truth to power. He was fearless and those are still tenets of journalism which I think we would all uh, 
been very wise to follow. He wasn't a reflective man. He was not, didn't see himself as an intellectual, but he was a man who related to ordinary people, and he was a brilliant, brilliant. By the way, he's a great guy. Great. Lionel Barber, thank you very much.